everyone. Uh, my name is Ashley Gower, and I'm the Assistant AD for Communications here at NSU. And I just wanted to welcome everybody to our Winter Sports um, Media Day and kind of give you an idea of how we're going to get this thing going. So we'll have Dr. Downs and our um, Athletic Director Josh Moon come up, and then we will have speakers from our swim team, track and field, wrestling, women's basketball, and men's basketball. So thank you so much for coming out and supporting Northern State today. And our president, Dr. Downs, will kick things off. Good morning, everybody. So here we are. It's pretty far into the fall. And we haven't forgotten our fall sports, but we're excited to also start our winter sports. Uh, so we're in this transition, and uh, I think what's interesting is all the teams have their own hashtag because, you know, we live in the land of Twitter. Even, even I post every once in a while on Twitter. I tweet out. So the team mottos right now for swimming, it's uh, hashtag the end factor. And wrestling is hashtag time to hunt. Ooh, I kind of like that one. Uh, women's basketball is hashtag tradition with a capital N. And men's basketball is hashtag P-I-T-P, pride in the pack. So everybody's got their own hashtag. What I can say is that uh, we're always proud of all of our teams. Our students do a great job in the classroom and whatever field of play. And that's just a point of pride. When I go out in the community, people just say, you know, we love northern students and we love our northern student athletes. So let's give them a round of applause. So there's a few new things here for the, our winter sports. Uh, if you think about new facilities, we have a, a new basketball court. We have this thing that's kind of big that hangs up off the ceiling. It's really, really big with the, the big scoreboard. That's going to be a nice addition. Um, wrestling also has a new mat. And the mat comes out Thursday night. So we're just trying to up our game to show people that we're really committed to athletics. And it's not just the university. We have a lot of partners in the community that do that. So when you think about new, it's not just about facilities. We have a new head basketball coach for men, Coach Phillips. Where are you? He's in here somewhere. He you leave? <laughs> you can't do that. OK. Um, we have Coach Gorski for soccer, women's soccer. We have Coach Mahaffey for cross country. We have Coach Dingman for track. And uh, we have a lot of new student athletes. We always have new students. They come and go. Uh, we, they go when they graduate. That's a hint. And uh, the players come and, and make our program better because the new generations of players actually challenge the current student athletes to be even better. And that's the tradition at Northern. We're constantly grinding away to be better. Each of our athletic programs has its own tradition, and as I started with, has its own hashtag. But every one of you has this desire to improve, whether it's your jump shot or whatever wrestling hold or you know, how do you do a good turn in the pool. Uh, you've got to work to be better, and it takes a lot of work, and that's one of the things I really like about our coaches and our student athletes constantly grinding away to be better, improving in the field and in the classroom. That's what we're doing. And we're, the, the facilities changes are kind of emblematic that we're constantly going to be better and we're going to get better and we're going to do better. It's all about getting better. If you think about life, it's all about continuous improvement. If it doesn't go so well on the, on the playing field, on the mat, on the court, what do we learn from that? And I have every confidence that our coaches have those conversations. When you look at the fans and our community, they're constantly investing in the students and in this infrastructure. And we're constantly thankful for that. So I would ask every one of you, as you go out in the community, whether you're at the grocery store or getting gas, and people come up to you and say, don't you play this or play that, always turn the conversation as yes, and we're so thankful for our community support. We can never thank the community enough. We're constantly improving enrollments. Our freshman classes keep getting bigger. We're constantly increasing the number of scholarships that we have. 
because we're investing in our students and their success so that you leave with less debt and you see that your time here was a very vital time to your development. So the message I have for the teams and all of our teams and actually all of our students is real simple. Strive to be better. Keep getting better. Better in the classroom, better in the pool, better on the mat, better on the hardwood, whatever surface you're playing in or wherever you're competing, be that better person and that better competitor. When you're here in college, the whole point is thinking about how do I pave my way forward and how do I pave our way forward as a team or as a university. We're investing a lot in athletics and we're investing a lot in the university. It's all paying off and we're moving forward with a great sense of momentum, momentum that's never been had before at Northern State University. So with that, let's have a great winter season and as always, go Wolves. So it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Josh Moon, our Director of Athletics. Josh. All right, thank you, Dr. Downs. So I, Dr. Downs hit on some good points there with the, the momentum here in the building of our programs. And we can see that across the board. Every team is getting better every year. And want to wish our volleyball team good luck tonight as they close their season at home here. Uh, tonight and, and this weekend, so get out and support your Wolves volleyball team. And we're going to kick it off right now with swimming, and we're excited to have Coach Mananian here in her third year. She has brought in 11 new student athletes here, the largest recruiting class in our program's history. So this program is just over 10 years old, and Cole's been here, in her, like I said, in her third year. She's coached five All-American performances, one national champion, of course, Hannah Castigar, who is training for the Olympic trials currently. And a fun fact for Nicole, she, I think she's the only person in the University of Aberdeen with a perfect ACT score. So there you go, <laughs> Coach Nicole Mananian. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we're really excited this year. We brought in 11 freshmen and one transfer. So out of our 22 um, athletes on our team, 12 of them are new to NSU. Um, so is our biggest class. It's also our strongest class. Um, our team right now is hands down the best that our team has been in the water um, as a unit. Um, this is the strongest NSU swimming has ever been, and it's really, really exciting. Um, we began, began practices back in August, even though we're a winter sport. Um, we started the fourth day of classes, and we've been training them really hard since then. Um, the way swimming works is we go through our season with a lot of overtraining with the goal to focus for three big meets. Our big meets are going to be our midseason in November, conference championships in February, and then of course nationals in March. Um, right now we're averaging them about 17 and a half miles a week in the water um, in addition to their dry land training, their strength and conditioning, and then some running that we do as well. Um, so we overtrain them and then when we get to those big meets we taper them or we decrease their yardage and the intensity so that they are rested and then able to perform um, and kind of peak them for those big meets. So at those meets, our goals are to um, finish as high as we can, score as many points as we can, advance as many back to finals as we can, and then of course qualify for our nationals with our nationals cuts. Um, Right now with such a young team, we are still learning how to race and that's where our dual meets really come into play. So our meets through October and November are really a lot of race training. We're learning how we want them to race and they're learning um, you know, how to perform in the splits and the strategy so that when we get to the big meets and they're rested, they're able to perform them um, those events in the right ways. Um, we're still adjusting a little bit to our training, but again, with so many freshmen and new summers, it's really exciting. We have a lot of high energy and we've been seeing a lot of improvements. A really great example is freshman Annalise Bishop from here on South Dakota. Um, she came to us as a 120 100 breaststroker, and at the first meet, she dropped a 112.5. Um, for you non-swimming people, that changed her rankings in the NSIC from 40, excuse me, 47th to 28th. Um, just from the first meet. So that's the type of stuff we're looking forward to this year and seeing some really big improvements. Um, right now, after only four meets, half of our team is ranked in the top 16 in our conference. So top 16 scores points, and half our team is ranked there right now. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, three of our freshmen are ranked in more than one event as well in those top 16. Um, 
looking forward again to those big meets in December um, at our first mid our mid season meet, our first taper meet. I'm really expecting a lot of school records, um, particularly our relays. Our relays have been incredibly strong this year. Um, I'm expecting most, if not all, of the freshman records to be broken, um, and we're we're looking forward to making some NCAA cuts. Um, one of our, actually our one transfer um, from Oregon State we have with us today is Connor Duran. We're expecting some big things from her, so we'll, we'll bring her up here. Hello, I'm Connor Doran. I'm from Redding, California. And like Nicole said, I'm a transfer from Oregon State. And one of the questions people always ask me is like, why did you choose uh, Northern? Why did you come to a small town in South Dakota? And one thing that on my visit that I noticed about Northern is there's a really uh, big sense of community and there's a lot of help from the professors, your coaches to make you a better person, like Dr. Downs said. And I think that's very important for me as an individual to grow in not only my sport, but also in academics. And um, I think some of the goals that I'm looking forward to is uh, trying to get a national cut and having our relays make nationals too. And um, I can see this in the little steps that we take every day in practice, working hard, racing each other. And I'm just really excited and I think our team is really excited to reach our goals here at Northern. I guess we'll open it up to see if anybody has any questions for either Connor or myself. Uh, what's the major? Uh, biology. So um, <laughs> I want to either go in, go to med school or um, go to graduate school and study. Um, I'm not sure what part of biology yet, but um, either microbiology or um, looking at uh, yeah, or going to med school and working with kids or doing family practice. Um, I'm also Native American, so I think I really want to give back to the Native community and work as um, a doctor and Um, so, well, Oregon State's swim team got cut, which was really unfortunate because I really loved my team there and my coach, but um, from really short notice, Nicole reached out to me and I made a visit to Northern and um, it was, I just had a really great visit <laughs> and I really liked the campus and I met with Dr. Mitchell and he was just so excited about his field and his practice that I could just see myself learning so much from him. And um, I think like also meeting with Laura, my Native American counselor, she really like, um, she like showed that I could help in the Native community and do a lot of service there and um, give more insight to, and learn more about my culture and, um, I also have family in Minnesota, so being close to them is really nice. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, thanks, Nicole and Connor. We're going to shift gears and talk track and field. We have a new head coach of the Wolves track and field program, Lynn Dingman. Lynn is a Hall of Famer here, still holds a school record for the heptathlon, and she's coached three All-Americans uh, during her tenure here as an assistant coach. And I don't know if there's anybody with more passion and belief for Northern track and field than Coach Dingman. So we're really excited for her leadership. She's already implemented a number of changes that I think will change the culture for this program moving forward and raise the bar across um, indoor track, outdoor track. Uh, for both men and women. So let's give it up for Coach Lynn Dingman. Thank you, Josh, for the introduction. Um, 
As Josh said, I'm an alumni of Northern. I'm very excited to be back. Um, such an honor for me to, to take over the reins of this program. Um, very excited to get going. Uh, we've been recruiting really hard. Uh, excited for next week. We have our signing day coming up on the 13th. Uh, as of right now, we have seven early signees. So we're excited about that. Hoping to add a few more to that coming up here too. Um, but coming off from last season, you know, we're coming off a decent season. We were sixth place on both the men's and women's team um, at the NSIC championships. So we're excited to keep building that this coming year. Um, we're going to be graduating some awesome seniors this year. Um, just to highlight a few of those guys and gals, um, big point scorers for us. Uh, we have Nicolette Neeland from Summit, South Dakota. Um, she scored in the indoor weight throw this past year. Um, excited to see what she can do in both the hammer and weight. Uh, we also have Sonia Alleman from Spain. Um, she's an all-conference high jumper for us, so looking for her to score both indoor and out. She's also a, a triple jumper for us, too. Um, Madison Barnes from Jamestown, North Dakota. Uh, she's a multi-school record holder, so she has, I think, five school records, so she's a senior for us. Um, looking for her to lead the team in the relays this year. Um, on the men's side, um, we have some, some big guys graduating this year. Um, Kelson Brewer from the great state of Washington. Um, any of you guys who know Kelson, probably the, the most positive person you'll ever meet. Um, he's been a, a, just a, a very valuable team to our, mem to our, um, to our team. Um, he's scored um, in the Open Six All-Conference. Um, he's also been All-Conference in the 400-meter hurdles. He's also a, a decathlete, so he's kind of a jack of all trades. Uh, Kelson will be graduating this year. Uh, we also have Isaiah Fletcher. Um, he's a one kid that you guys should really be watching. Um, he's just fantastic training, worked hard this summer, um, just got done with a workout downstairs, and, and he just killed it. So excited to see what he can do this year. Um, he scored in the 200, 400, and 4x4 four four this past season. Um, then we have Ricardo Doan. Um, he's healthy. Um, last year, he was injured pretty much most of the year. Um, he's coming back very healthy. Um, was all first team all conference at the cross country championships a week ago. So we're excited to see what he can do on the track. Um, and then we have Bryce Malsum just down the road from Edmond Central. Um, Bryce is our decathlete. He's been primed since his freshman year. Um, we look for him to, to score some big points, hopefully make a national meet this year. So we're really excited about our seniors. Um, they're going to be hard to lose um, after this year. Um, another, uh, another person to talk about, a big guy to talk about, I should say, is Tanner Berg, our Watertown native. Um, he's a returning All-American for us in the weight throw. Um, last year, he scored points for us in the hammer, weight, shot, and disc. So we're excited to see what, what Tanner can do and what he can break, hopefully no more water fountains this year. Um, then we also have Jordan Metkin. Um, Jordan had a great indoor season last year, broke the school record in the shot put. So she's another one that we expect to hopefully make a national meet coming up here too. Um, and of course I have uh, Keely Hill, have her come up. Um, Keely just had a fantastic freshman year, just did amazing for us. Um, she was runner up indoors and then conference champ in the pole vault. Um, excited for some big jumps for her this year. Um, and I'll let Keely take the mic. Um, I'm Keely Hill. I'm from Gillette, Wyoming, and I'm a sophomore here. And my major is sports marketing and administration with a minor in coaching. Um, that's how, that's how, you, how you came here? How you picked Northern? Um, I came here because I got an email, I think, from you. And I had been looking at trying to go D1 and thought that maybe I should check out a D2 school. And when I came here for the first time, I really liked it and I liked the coaching staff and everybody. And then I went and visited NDSU and so it was between here and NDSU. And so I had to do a second visit here. And the second one, I realized that this is where I wanted to be and that the team felt like home. Um, we, so we only get to pole vault twice a week on Sundays and Wednesdays, and then we just started doing pool workouts, which 
hopefully we'll have more pole vault stuff involved. Well, I see you sliding on the floor. <laughs> um, that's to work on just our turning and getting the bend in the pole so we can get the perfect timing to for when we go over the bar. Is that unique to Coach Royer? Uh, well, I've never done it before, and so <laughs> it just must just be a him thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very good. Can you can you still be Wade in the pole vault? No. <laughs> Any other questions for Katie? Thank you. Um, well, just to touch base on just a couple incoming freshmen we have. Um, we have Tafara Hodunga. He's from Zimbabwe. Uh, he's a 47 and change guy in uh, the open quarter. We're really excited about him. We also add Ronnie Stevenson. He's from Nevada. Uh, he's also a 48 quarter. So one thing we're really excited about is that our men's 4x4 team this year, we really feel like some school records are going to go down. Um, and that's a team that um, we've been second several years in a row now in that men's 4x4 at the championships. And those guys are bound and determined to, to bring home the W this year. Um, also a team that I think that, you know, can make a national meet as well. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, so coming up for us, we have our maroon versus gold meet coming up in four weeks um, on November 25th. So that is coming up. Um, then we have our season opener in Fargo on December 6th and 7th. So it's just right around the corner. So we're excited to get going. All right, thanks. We're going to shift into wrestling and bring up Coach Burkett. Coach is in his fifth season here at Northern. He has coached two All-Americans and two Super Region 3 champions. And we finished last year with the best finish in the NSIC since 2012. And I think our first win over a school from Sioux Falls in a long time, which was great to see. Nationally ranked throughout the, uh, the year last year. So Coach Rocky Burkett. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for uh, everybody for coming out. Um, yeah, I guess we're just pretty excited about the season. Uh, our guys were able to, uh, we actually competed this, this Saturday for the first time. So it was uh, good to see some of our guys were, they've been in the wrestling room for the last two months just beating each other up for a while. They're kind of starting to see it in their faces, getting some long faces. And then uh, yesterday at practice, they're all excited. They're pretty happy because they got to go out and, and, and uh, compete against some other guys. So it was good. Um, I think overall, we had four champions and I think 18 of the guys placed. So um, pretty good. It was decent competition. You know, it was good to see, see what some things we can build on and stuff. Um, but yeah, so it was a um, good weekend. Uh, as far as our roster size, I mean, that's been one of the biggest things. The challenge is just throughout the last uh, uh, five or four years is just being able to put out a consistent consistent team just with de having uh, good depth and numbers and um, you know I think when, when we started here whatever it was four years ago in, in April at our press conference when I got announced we had seven guys on the roster so um, started off this season with 32 guys on the roster so that's been a big improvement for us um, allows us to redshirt guys allows us you know if injuries come up or anything like that we can plug guys in at different spots and, and weights so I'm um, real excited about our depth um, with that depth, it also uh, puts in, a, a, you know, breeds a lot of competition. So um, our our lineup's not necessarily set as of yet. You know, it's, it's kind of set for this weekend or this uh, week for our first duel. But um, over these next courses in the next couple of weeks with our open tournaments, we'll kind of continue to see where people are at. So um, that's, that's good to see. Um, as far as, like, the guys coming in this year, we brought in 13 new guys. Um, you know, it was good to see we had two of uh, two of those new guys uh, won this weekend. Uh, James Burks, one of our freshmen, um, who just got conference wrestler of the week, and then uh, Marcus Placide, who's um, was a junior college uh, national runner-up last year. So um, good to see uh, those new guys jump in right away. Um, and then also we got our four seniors this year: um, Brian Burnett from uh, Kansas City, Missouri; uh, Walker Carr from Carrington, North Dakota; Riley Lura from Carrington, North Dakota and uh, Kenny Jones from Susanville, California. Um, so I'll just uh, bring up my two guys that I got here today. These are two of our captains this year. These, are, these guys were voted on by our team, um, two of the four captains that we have. 
Um, so I'll welcome them up to the uh, podium. We got Caden Moore, um, a 149-pounder from O'Neill, Nebraska, and Kenny Jones, a uh, 141-pounder from Susanville, California. Let them, let them tell you a little bit about themselves. Um, hi, I'm Caden Moore. I'm a freshman from O'Neill, Nebraska. Um, Kenny Jones from Susanville, California. Uh, we're really looking forward to this season. We, uh, we have a lot of incoming freshmen this year that have stepped up in the room, stepped up on the mat, and they've really shown them the potential that we could have as a team. Um, our seniors this year, we couldn't ask for a better group. And uh, uh, my class, I think we're, we're ready to put a show for, this week, for Thursday and this weekend. Um, coming in my freshman year and seeing where like the team's at now, it's changed a bunch. I can't really remember how many we come in with. I was 14 freshmen our fresh my freshman year. I don't know how many total on the team, but and then sophomore year it kept getting bigger. Junior year and looking at the team now, I mean like Rocky said, we got depth and every day is a grind in practice, fighting for a spot. And so it makes it that much better, more competition, and prepares you that much more. And so I'm looking forward to it last year. Um, yeah, just the uh, biggest thing that we want to highlight on is uh, this Thursday is our first home duel. Uh, we're really excited about what the team can really do this year. You know, last year we, we uh, really showed what we can do, but we really want to dominate this year. And uh, we had some close ones, and it's not even going to be close this year, just being honest. <laughs> uh, I think it's really cool. You know, I, I come from a small town community. I've never seen a mat that big before in my life. I've wrestled some big tournaments, and it's, it's going to be really awesome. That video board's pretty cool. Only D1 schools really do stuff like that, and coming to a Division II school like us, and Showing cool stuff like that is awesome. Agreed. Coming from a small school, too. <laughs> hey, how's your, how's your uh, workout pattern or you know, your, your focus change since you got married? Uh, did that change a lot? Is it still... Well, I don't get a duck hunt in the mornings anymore. <laughs> Cut <a> weight and <laughs> work out five days in the morning. So no more duck hunting, but I don't know. Married life's the same. As it used to be. <laughs> Any questions? What were you guys have to do uh, past those classes and are you going to like to stop? Who who are you like wrestling against that weekend? Like who are you looking to do for the Um I think uh, just speaking from my weight class, uh, I'm really looking forward to wrestling Mankato and St. Cloud again this year. Uh, last year, they were the one and the three, and uh, I think I competed really well, but I really want to beat those guys this year and be the top guy this year. Um, as of right now, I don't think I have anybody in particular that I want to beat, but just beat all of them. <laughs> Anything else? Thanks. Thanks, um, I just wanted to hit on a uh, couple more things real quick. Uh, just introduce my new staff. Uh, we got a new grad assistant, Griff Osing from uh, Albia, Iowa, wrestled at uh, Southwest Minnesota State, was a national qualifier. And then uh, Zeke Andrade, our new assistant coach, another Redding, California person, uh, wrestled for uh, South Dakota State was a couple year starter at South Dakota State for them. Um, otherwise, just uh, like I said, or these guys said, looking forward to our duel this uh, Thursday against St. John's. Uh, we'll have six home duels this year. Um, starting off with St. John's, and we have two in December. Uh, we'll kick off our NSIC schedule with uh, Minnesota State Moorhead on December 5th, and then uh, returning national champs, uh, St. Cloud State on December 13th. So looking forward to that. Um, also, I think she left, but uh, make sure you guys tell my wife I told her thank you for all she does. And, oh, she's back there. Okay, she's back there. So thank, thank you, Jennifer, for all you do. You want to wave back there? Yep. So she has to put up with three little kids while I'm gone all the time, so I appreciate all she does. So turn it over to Z uh, Josh. 
So Kenny, you know, when you get married, you you know you start telling the truth more, right? Just be honest and tell them exactly like it is. So he's smart. Uh, I know. And Cole Dahl can talk about the hunting adventures they go on, right? They're used to no, no more, I guess, right? Uh, we're gonna talk women's basketball, and we're excited to bring Coach Kruger up. And she's brought in seven newcomers this year, and of course, national attendance leaders last year for the 12th straight year for women's basketball. She's in her second season. She is an NSU Hall of Famer. I think almost three times now with two teams and as individual. She was the most valuable player of the 94 national championship team that just got inducted this year. Over 140 career wins as a head coach, Paula Kruger. When you say three-time Hall of Famer, it tells you really just how old I am and how rough the pickings were at that point. Um, I just want to take a minute to say good luck to all the other teams that start out here with their, with their winter stuff. I don't know anything about wrestling, but I can scream shoot, so that makes it fun for me to go, because that's a legal term there. I know nothing about swimming, so I just can scream, and that's pretty common for me, just scream. Um, but uh, track and field I know a little bit about, and so I'm, I'm excited to see that stuff. Jake keeps me up. My nephew was a trackster here and an All-American and keeps me up to date on everybody that, that's running. So good luck to you guys. I wanted to take just a couple minutes to introduce my staff. My assistants are not quite front row. Zach said he showered today, but he lied. So I've got uh, Coach Newman, Coach Kelsey Kruger, and Landon Looning as a student assistant. Um, all three are, I wouldn't be able to do it without them, that's for sure, and certainly they are um, well uh, appreciated by our players too because they get to hear more than just my voice so I want to thank those three my husband is not here um, he said he was gonna watch online but if he's anything like I think he is he has no idea what he's looking at so I'm gonna say thank you anyway um, getting into getting into our players we have seven new players this year we have four transfers and three true freshmen uh, of our transfers two are junior college transfers one comes from a, a northern sun opponent and the other comes from Nevada Reno and then the three freshmen are relatively local Edgley North Dakota Mandan North Dakota and then Warner um, been a unique opportunity I think to blend a very diverse group of of individuals we brought in some of those transfers to try and kind of fill some of those middle classes we felt like we were um, kind of dominant on that that older end but we needed some leadership and maybe some some depth on the perimeter so we we added some kids on the perimeter in that group, our plans are to change the tempo and the style that has been played in the past and to, you know, to up the tempo just a little bit and to, to shoot more threes. And I know, I know that sounds crazy coming from a team, I think, that's been like 14th, 15th, 16th in three-point attempts for 49 years or whatever, whatever it was. But um, we're trying to, to up those numbers to be in the top four in the Northern Sun and within the top ten um, in the nation as far as attempts and then certainly the makes to follow that. Um, our schedule, we really thought it important to be able to schedule at home early just because we have so many new faces. I think what people forget is when you're the attendance leader in the country, there's some unspoken pressure I think kids feel from that with all the people watching and it, and it being new and, and certainly now with the big scoreboard and all those kinds of things. So giving you an opportunity to, to warm up at home and to find out that it really is a comfort level and to be here. And we haven't been able to do that in the past. And so this year, uh, we start on Friday at noon, believe it or not, so come have lunch and watch us start out. We have a, a crossover challenge uh, with regional opponents. We've got Roger State from Claremore, Oklahoma coming, and then we've got Central Missouri, who was the national champion two years ago, uh, that's gonna be here as well. And then Moorhead is our, our counterpart in playing that. So please come out and watch Friday at noon, and Saturday we are at six o'clock. Um, I'm gonna bring up three seniors. I can't say enough positive things about them. Uh, they're a really passionate group of young ladies who have gotten into a boat with me, and. Um, have put themselves all in, in in situations that maybe weren't always always comfortable, but they do know um, what a privilege it is to play here, to play for the Wolves, to play in front of that many people, and to be supported by so many. So I'm going to have Bree, Jess, and Sarah come up here and, and talk to you a little bit, and then if you have any questions, you can feel free to, to holler when they're done. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm Sarah Tweed. I am a senior post from Brookings, South Dakota. I'm majoring in marketing and plan to graduate in May. Um, Coach kind of talked about it, but I'm just going to touch a little more on it. This year, we're really pushing the ball in transition and pushing the tempo of the game. We're really trying to hone on on some of our speedy buggers right? um, and our athleticism as a team. Uh, we're repping, you know, 
everything every day in practice, and we're really, really excited about this year. So I'll turn it over to Bri. Hello, I am Brianna Kusler. I am from here in Aberdeen. Um, like they mentioned, we're all seniors here. Um, I am going into human performance and fitness with a business and coaching minor. Um, one of the things that we're really looking forward to this year is that we finally have a full team healthy, knock on wood. Um, last year around this time, I had mono, Jesse broke her ankle, and then before we were all able to get back, Sarah ended up tearing her ACL, unfortunately. So especially us three, we're eager to kind of get back together. Um, Last year we were kind of dealt an unfortunate hand, but we can give all the excuses in the world, but it doesn't change um, anything. We've got to, um, it doesn't uh, do anything other than we learn from the, the mistakes that were made and um, all the aspects of the game, and we're eager to get back to um, doing what we do best. Um, I think having the full team back, it adds just a greater element of competition and practices. Um, and. Also, last week and the week prior, we were able to um, scrimmage against D-Dub, and we went up to NDSU and, and scrimmaged them. And I think that scrimmaging both of those um, was a great way to evaluate where we're at um, right now and what we still need to continue to work on. Um, but overall, I think it really got all of us excited to um, get to playing and not just practicing. So come out on Friday at noon and Saturday at 6 and watch us play. You can stay in the middle. <laughs> you got it. Okay, I'm Jesse Marty. I'm from Cuba City, Wisconsin. My major is human performance and fitness. And then when I graduate in May, I will be attending chiropractic school in Davenport, Iowa. But it's really crazy. It's just like yesterday, we kind of all moved into Jerdy Hall and just like looking back, it's not even there anymore. So all the changes that have been made is really cool. <laughs> um, definitely over the past four years, we've really changed on the court and off the court as people. And we definitely think, can thank the university and the community and our basketball coaches for that. It's for sure super sad and kind of an, an unreal feeling right now that this is the last year we get to play the game that we love and have dedicated so much of our lives to. But it does really make us enjoy every moment that we have left because before we know it, we won't be able to lace up our shoes anymore and step on the court for tip off. But with that being said, we can't wait to get the season rolling Friday and we can't, hopefully we can see you all there. And any questions for any of us? Nope, okay. I was going to talk a little bit about the two scrimmages, and Brianna stole my thunder, so we're good. We can wipe that out. Um, just as we move forward and we look towards the season, obviously the Northern Sun, there's been a lot of changes with a lot of teams. Um, Mary had what we thought was going to come back as maybe the most powerful team that they'd had, and they lose three people from that one being who was predicted to be player of the year. Gabby Bull graduated and left at the post spot. Um, you go over to Moorhead and Moorhead had their leading scorer, um, Baravich, who is no longer playing, but they fill it with a transfer from North Dakota State. Sioux Falls is 100% healthy and playing 100 miles an hour. Um, you know, and obviously we expect them to probably be the best team on the South. Uh, the one thing that I can say is that we don't. We haven't talked about a preseason ranking. We haven't looked at it. I couldn't tell you where anybody else fits. I just know that we're going at it one game at a time. Uh, we certainly feel physically better, I think, than we have in the past. And I want to thank Coach Fritz for all he does uh, in the weight room. The kids are, are very strong. Um, you know, the nutrition piece has become something that's been very important. We're taking a, you know, a, a higher focus on that. But our goal is to, you know, reach the standards that these guys have talked about amongst themselves, and to continue to just put the best product that we can on the floor. So um, is there any questions for me? Oh, score, I like that too. So I'll hand this back over to Josh. We were gonna talk a little Cowboys football, but we'll move on from that. Right, Coach? And special recognition for Brianna Kusler. She's been our SAC president, student athlete advisory committee president for the last couple of years and done a phenomenal job from, and, and Terry Holmes leads that up, but just really helped transform that organization the last couple of years and um, some big time events. One of them is 
Operation Christmas Child, pie in the face. There'd be buckets around. Uh, Dr. Downs loves pie, loves pies in the face, so please uh, contribute all your money in his bucket, and you can eliminate mine. And uh, Is Terry in there this year? Hillary took it, okay. But thank you, Brianna, for all your leadership with the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. Let's give her a round of applause for everything she does. Okay, last but not least, men's basketball coming off the back-to-back -back NSIC regular season and tournament champions, two straight NCAA regional uh, tournament appearances, and we're excited about hosting the second annual Dakota Bank Classic here at the end of the month, and that's something that we're going to do for the next five years. So that uh, we're, gonna, we're working on a schedule right now. Hopefully we can incorporate women's as well in the future, but just stay tuned for that for the next. Um, hopefully we'll have some, some more information here in the spring with that. So let's bring up Coach Saul Phillips. He's in his first season. He's a two-time Summit League Coach of the Year at North Dakota State. Over 200 career head coaching wins at the D1 level and was a star player at the University of Wisconsin-Platteville National Champion for Coach Bo Ryan. Um, star is a loose term there, right? But uh, let's give it, over, give it up to our Saul Phillips. There's a fine line between star player and human victory cigar, which is, that's what I was actually. I checked in, everybody felt good. Game was over. A uh, lot of new. We've got a lot of new. We've got new scoreboard, new floor, new coaches, new science buildings. We've got a lot of new. But we also have a program that's been very, very successful. So trying to maintain the continuity that we've had while embracing some of the fun that comes along with that new. Uh, you know, transitions can be difficult. And these guys didn't ask for a coaching change. They were very, very comfortable where they were. Uh, to come in and try to push them along in different ways while still kind of embracing the things, the culture. I, I can tell you this, one of the most, I don't know if it's a word, non-entitled gr group of guys I've ever been around. Just work hard every day. Uh, they've given us as a staff a lot of energy. Uh, they're smart. They work hard. And, you know, overall, I, I think the, the biggest thing you could say about any athletics program in here is it's ultimately your job to represent the, the university in a first-class manner. I can't think of a better group of guys to represent this school. And I can't think of a more fitting, w with the dynamic changes that are going on around campus, the dynamic changes that are going on in this building, the, the fan experience getting better and better and better. you got to want to be a part of this. This is fun. And we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, it's funny, as you go along, uh, there's been moments in practice where I've started to say things to, say, Gabe and say, you know, maybe we should do this. And he looks at me and goes, I just told the guys that. Those are positives. That, that means we're starting to think alike. You can't force that. You can't make it happen any faster than it's going to happen. But we better make it happen in a hurry because we've got two huge regional games coming up here this weekend. Um, our region is loaded. Obviously, the NSIC is always strong. And that's just the way we like it. Big challenges early. Uh, it's going to be important that we, you know, get out on the road this weekend, really come together as a group. I, the guys are really tight. They come around the office a lot. It's just a very comfortable atmosphere right now. Okay, let's throw a little adversity in there. Let's, let's throw a, a, a cold post-game meal in there after a tough game. Let's see how that works. Because it's really easy to be close right now. And we are. It's good. It's wonderful. But that's got to be genuine, and that's got to be forged through experience. That process starts now. I'm very excited to do it. Uh, would really encourage the fans to come out and watch this group. Uh, 22nd, 23rd is when we start at home, Dakota Bank Classic. We've got two former Wolves coming in as coaches. Uh, it's going to be like a big old family reunion. And uh, just really looking forward to getting this thing going. I, I know our guys are, they'd love to do another month of passing and catching drills, but we're going to have to play some games, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, we'll bring them up here. We'll start out, uh, I've got two seniors here, Gabe and Cole, and then we've got Parker. Uh, obviously, all going to be major contributors this year. Uh, Gabe, you want to say a few words? Yeah, let's do it. So I'm Gabe King. I'm a senior um, majoring in economics. Um, you know, the biggest thing with, obviously, the whole summer and the offseason, the preseason, is kind of getting accustomed to all the transitions we're kind of going through between new coaching staff, new freshmen kind of identifying their roles, you know, where they're going to fit in everything. Um, the transition with the coaches, though, I think has been 
relatively simple and easy because of just the communication aspect of things. Um, they are kind of they really got a, across what they expect from us, um, teaching points, stuff like that. I mean, it's been a while since I went into the first day of practice and have no idea what we're going to do. So um, that was a little different, but. You know, the transition hasn't really been a distraction for us. I mean, we all still have the same ultimate goal, you know, winning the conference, winning our region, going to the national championship again, um, that kind of stuff. So we're all really excited to just kind of get started this weekend. I'm here to talk about the weekend. So, uh, yeah, we're all excited about uh, coming off a, See how well they work together? a long, <laughs> a long, a long uh, group of practices. We've been practicing for a couple of weeks here, and we're excited to get on the road. Like Coach said, we're a tight uh Met a group of guys, and a lot of people haven't uh, been on long road trips yet, so it's going to be a test to see if they can kind of grind with us on the road trip. We've got about a 12-hour bus ride. We're talking about packing games and movies and what we want to watch, but at the end of the day, it's a business trip, and some of the freshmen and the younger guys are going to attest to that, see how they can handle it. Um, we got Southeastern Oklahoma right away. You know, after watching a little bit of film, they were playing Oklahoma University. I think they only lost by like 12 or 13. Um, after watching that film, we got to kind of focus on guarding them in transition, building a wall, and also test Gabe a little bit down low on his uh, physical presence. Um, he'll be. No, 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 we won't. But uh, yeah, it'll be a good test for us on Friday night, and then come back and play on Saturday, kind of like our conference schedule. So that'd be kind of nice. We'll be playing Southern Naz, and they're an athletic group of guys that like to run and gun and. What we saw on film, like the they like uh, pump fakes, so we'll get them up in there a little bit. Um, but uh, that's kind of all I have. And if you want to talk about duck hunting, see Kenny and I after this. <laughs> uh, don't talk to me about duck hunting. I don't know anything about that. Um, but I'm Parker Fox. I'm a sophomore from Miami, Minnesota. Um, uh, going to talk a little bit about uh, the season as a whole. Um, like Cole said, we start off uh, with two pretty tough games against pretty tough teams. Um, but we want to make sure we go down there and take care of business, but we don't um, let this weekend define us as a, as a team, win or loss, because um, we come back and we play a uh, pretty grueling schedule um, with the girls as well. And the NSIC is, is uh, it's, a tough, uh, it's a tough thing to do, um, playing back-to-back -back games on Friday and Saturday, and you're traveling to pretty small towns with not very big places to eat. So, What's wrong with small towns? <laughs> <laughs> a lot <laughs> um but yeah um like coach was saying we just want to make sure we uh come back and get that record uh for the attendance again and um get people in our gym um a lot of great things going on with the scoreboard like everybody uh attested to but yeah we're just excited to get rolling so is there any questions for us It literally every time it's just fun to be around them, and that's that's the best thing I can tell you about them. They're also pretty good, so that's that's good as well. We tremendous opportunity here to get some in-region wins against teams that are going to be in the tournament. Uh, we're not dipping our toe in; we're doing a cannonball, so it's right away, and we're ready to go. And I know this that uh, when when we tip off on Friday, we won't have to give much of a speech to get them ready to play. Uh, they they remember uh, our opponent and what happened last year. So I'll save that speech for when I really need it. Okay. Any questions? Oh, somebody's got to have some question. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for coming today. Have a wonderful rest of the week, and as always, go Wolves.